epoxy finish is almost universally the number one trouble spot for custom rod builders. And it shouldn't be because it is about the most simple thing uh, that you'll do on a custom rod. I think the guys just try to make it too difficult. And I'm going to go through very quickly how to mix it and apply it and allow it to do what it already knows how to do. And I think once you see me go through this, if you'll mimic what I'm doing, you'll get the same results. Let's start off quickly by some of the things you need. Obviously, uh, two-part epoxy finish, not epoxy adhesive, epoxy finish. And I really don't care what brand you use. They're all extremely similar. Some are a little thicker, a little thinner. Um, other than that, they're all going to give you roughly the same results. Measure by volume, not weight. They're designed to be measured by volume, and the best way to do that are syringes. Silicon-free syringes, by the way. Don't use drugstore syringes if you can help it. Get the ones from the epoxy manufacturers. Uh, mix at least three cc's of each part so that you will have a little bit of uh, room for error there. If, if you're off just a tad on a three cc per part mix, uh, it's not going to affect you the way that being off a small amount on a smaller half to one cc per part mix would. Uh, obviously you'll need a plastic mixing cup, uh, some aluminum foil for pouring the finish out on later and I'll explain why. You're going to need a um, either a spatula or a wooden popsicle stick, something flat for mixing the finish. And then brushes. It doesn't have to be an expensive brush. I'll just say that a wider flat brush is much, much better than a small round brush because this is more of an application tool. We're not really going to brush the finish on. We're simply going to allow the finish to flow from the brush to the rod. And we'll get into that uh, once I get the finish mixed and we start our application. Okay, here's where we're at. I have mixed equal portions of our epoxy finish. Three cc's of part A and three cc's of part B. That's your minimum. If you have more guys to wrap, a butt wrap, whatever, obviously you want to mix more, but never mix less than that. You need that margin for error built in. I've stirred it very slowly for three to four minutes to ensure we get as few bubbles in the mix as possible. And then I have poured it out on a piece of aluminum foil, which will further allow bubbles to dissipate. It also reduces the heat from the exothermic reaction of the two parts, which will increase your pot life. Uh, I'm using a wider brush because this is a wider wrap. There's nothing wrong on a rod with using two brushes, a wider brush down near the butt on your cross wraps, on your uh, larger guys with longer wraps, and then a narrower brush, or I say less width, as you get towards the tip where the guide wraps are more narrow. I'm going to load my brush, then I'm going to come up to the guide wrap, and I'm going to touch the brush to the guide wrap just a little bit beyond the edge. We'll make one revolution, get a little more finish on the brush. We'll go back and again just beyond the edge of that thread wrap as a sealer. We'll get a little more epoxy. Now we're dealing with the tunnels at this end. And so we've got to get the brush right in that tunnel. Introduce a little bit of finish there. We're going to go around one time. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Again, we're going to try to get some finish in that tunnel. And then we're going to come back around. One full revolution. I normally stand directly in front of the guide wrap uh, when I do this, but I'd be in the way of the camera. So anyway, okay, that guide wrap is done. We, we just finished it, and this is going to be perfect in two or three minutes when that finish levels out. We're not going to do anything else to it. Let me reset the camera, and we'll do a double foot guide so you can see how that works. Now coating a double foot guide is really no different. We'll do the same thing we did before, we'll load our brush. I'm using a slightly narrower brush for this particular guide wrap because it's not as wide. Notice I'm not brushing the finish around. I'm just really touching it to the guide wrap and allowing the finish to transfer from the brush to the guide wrap. Don't worry if it's not perfectly level at this point because the finish will take care of that on its own. That's its job.
And now that guide wrap's coated. Let's uh, let's do a couple of things. If you have trouble getting the finish up in the guide tunnels, take a toothpick and just put a drop on there and hold it right there, and it'll tend to seep or wick its way in. It'll also flow out nicely and level, but you do need to get those tunnels filled with finish or water can infiltrate those areas later, undermine your wrap at some point down the road. Now let's say you have a few bubbles that got in there. We don't really have any here, but if you did, this is all you need to fix it with. Keep the flame low. You're not trying to cook the finish. You're just momentarily going to warm it just enough to thin the finish so that air will expand and come out. That's it. As far as heating finish, that's all I ever do to it. You don't need a torch. You don't need all this other flame throwing equipment. This is enough and the few seconds you saw me give it there is, is all you need. Now we'll check back in a couple of minutes when this is flowed out and we'll look at both wraps and you can see how nicely they turned out. Okay, we're about uh, five or six minutes beyond when we originally applied finish to our single foot guide wrap. As you can see, we didn't push it around, we didn't poke it, we didn't manipulate it. The epoxy has done what it will do naturally. It has flowed out, it has leveled across the width of the wrap. Pretty good looking wrap. Now people will ask about rotation. Yeah, you gotta turn the rod after you put finish on it or the epoxy is gonna fall to the bottom and sag and drip off. You can do this with mechanical rotation, what people call a rod dryer, rotisserie motor, or you can do what I do, which is rotate by hand. I simply leave the guide straight up until I see it just start to get a little heavy on the bottom, at which point I'll rotate the rod until the guide is on the bottom, 180 degrees every time. And I'll leave it there for a few minutes until I see the finish get just a tad heavy on the bottom, and I'll spin the, the guide back up. And this will be early in the process, every two or three minutes, later in the process, an hour from now. It might be once every 10 minutes. By the time you get to two, two and a half hours, you know, you're looking at once every 15, 20 minutes maybe. And, and by then, two and a half, three hours, most epoxies at room temperature will be set and won't move it even further. And here's our double foot guide uh, five to 10 minutes after we initially applied the epoxy. We'll continue to rotate it as needed or if you had a, a rotisserie dryer type device, that's fine. Just keep it turning, keep an eye on it for a couple, three hours, after which point you should be okay. Now stick around and I will add a few tips and tricks to this video that you may find helpful. And of course, there's always plenty of information to be found in Rodmaker Magazine uh, on finish, in fact, on all aspects of custom rod building. So uh, that's another good resource for you. And at some point in the near future, I will do a follow-up video that contains um, some information on how to correct epoxy disasters if they should happen to you.